Okay, so um, proud to announce we're finally getting here on a very long journey, and we're not yet done, but that's all good. The journey should never end. We're looking to release the version two of the SB Starter Kit. So I think that's super cool, super exciting. Uh, for those of you who are new to the Starter Kit or haven't seen it, don't worry, we're gonna get to that as well. But it's just, it's an evolution of this tool that we really wanna see developers be able to have to help see a end-to-end -end uh, not only provisioning solution, but also to get uh, to see some sample web parts all put together, some extensions, some some all kinds of cool stuff, and see what it does. So this was released what two, three odd years ago. V1. It went through another minor iteration, and this is now the the big one, and so uh, another really big change. So we had some aims here on what we were looking to do. So one of the things is that the uh, version one included one SharePoint framework solution for all the web parts and the extensions. And there was a big ask from a lot of people, hey, we'd like to get just one web part. And Bill Cameron and some others split those out, uh, sort of in, in a sense outside of the project or unofficially outside of the project, which helped you all. But we wanted that to be a first party experience directly within the solution itself. So we wanted to split all that out. We wanted to be able to offer some sort of support for SharePoint 2019 as well as SharePoint Align. Uh, the star there on the 2019 is that the provisioning template aspect uh, for 2019 is not yet ready, uh, but the, the web parts that are available for 2019 could be used today, which is helpful. We also wanted to, do, to provide more demonstration around some of the new tools that have been coming out, such as uh, integrating with the Graph API and using the Graph Toolkit directly in SharePoint Online. Of course, there's great demos already available for that, but we wanted to include that in a, this more of a packaged solution. We also wanted to include a SharePoint framework library so that you could so that you could sort of see them together in a in a full deployed solution as well as it then getting deployed. So what we've done so far is we have a library, a SharePoint framework library. We have one of the web parts, one of the web parts that's designed only for SharePoint Online because you know, graph isn't a 2019 thing really. So uh, there are some some web parts that are not going to be available in the 2019 build, but are in the 20 at uh, SharePoint Online build. So we've integrated one with the library uh, that I, I'm really excited about uh, how it was put together. Uh, that was Elio Struth's um, idea around um, language strings. Localization would be a library component. Some of you might have seen some blog posts that he's written on that. We we're able to integrate that directly into the project. Also, uh, as Vesta had mentioned at the beginning, um, to demonstrate the Teams tab development within SharePoint Framework. So the idea that you could then just build these web parts and then they could be available directly within uh, Teams as well. And then also we wanted to demonstrate some of the new UX designs uh, and layout capabilities that are available within uh, SharePoint Online. And I put an asterisk there because it it is working per se. It's we want to extend it. So uh, the new starter kit is going to deploy uh, um, a portal. It's going to deploy some team sites, et cetera. And it's going to deploy pages. And on the primary portal landing page, it is using the new layout structure that Microsoft is looking at, has been recommending to us all uh, and putting web parts how it should be. But it's not as built out as, as we'd like to see it. The URL for this, we'll say this a couple times. Uh, I know there's a, a quicker one as well, but the one I always go to is just github.com slash PNP, the SP starter kit. Uh, if you want to get started today, I am going to have a, um, a little piece in a little bit. If you're going to go there right now or while, while I'm talking, the master branch is still on V1 um, on purpose. Uh, I'm going to make this change probably today or, or, or tomorrow where the master branch will be the V2. Uh, we'll talk about some of the limitations, but one of them is there's no direct upgrade path from V1 to V2 right now uh, because of the way the solutions are built. They're, if you install this over an existing installation, you're going to get two copies of all the web parts, and that's not normally ideal for most people. Uh, and we're not going to delete those automatically for you. Uh, so you'll just want to switch to the V2 branch when you go to GitHub. You'll see all the documentation there. You'll get all the code and all that really cool stuff. Uh, before we continue, though, I really do want to say some big thanks to everyone who contributed here. The people that have really been helping me um, on, the, uh, on the core is uh, Bo Cameron. Big, big thanks there. Uh, Elio has some great ideas. Of course, you got to thank Paulo and Erwin. Um, they were the, the, the fathers of the starter kit, and they 
gave us such a great foundation to work with. Uh, and then we had a whole bunch of other people who helped us with the with the translation of the web parts, the conversion of the web parts from the one solution to multiple. Some of them did this many months ago, and uh, I appreciate your patience with all of us while we were able to get all the pieces together, but huge thank you. And I would love to see some of you all add, get your name added to this list because there's plenty of room for us to extend this kit to be so much more than it currently is. Okay, so some general overviews uh, So the of the V2. First of all, right now, you're going to need to go to that V2 branch, uh, and you'll know you're on the right branch. The documentation right at the at top is either going to say V2 or it's not. So that's kind of, we're going to keep that in place probably for, for many months, if not many quarters, uh, because it is a pretty big, uh, it's a pretty big change. And we know that there's going to be a lot of people who are using V1 and they're still going to be having questions. And we want to make sure they understand uh, that this new code they're looking at is a V2 change. It is different. And we'll, of course, link back to the version one documentation. So that's not lost. We're looking to have, there are 16 uh, SPFX web parts in this one solution. There's five extensions, there's the, the library. Uh, there's three PNP provisioning templates. There's gonna be the default one for SharePoint Online. There's the one for 2019. Uh, and then there's also one that will just install the, uh, just install the SPFX solutions. What's really important uh, for us when we were building this was those provisioning templates are designed to absolutely be customizable by you. The, the, this is a developer's tool. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, many people take the starter kit and throw it right in production. From my perspective, that's not really what the aim is. The aim is as a developer's tool to see it in place on a dev tenant and then to quickly get under the hood and start making the changes and then pushing that out to your, to your production tenants. Uh, that being said, I. I think the code is solid and I think the solution is definitely the right way to go. So if it works in production for you, okay, good, yeah, happen for you. The uh, provisioning template on SharePoint Online, you get a communication site just like V1, uh, two team sites, that comp site is gonna be a hub site, the team sites are automatically associated with it. Of course, this is all done for you. You're gonna see in my installation, it's effectively two commands and you get all of this. Uh, there's a populated mega menu that will be uh, that will be deployed. You get a whole bunch of pages in that comp site. 15 pages are deployed for you. The full details of what this uh, is going to provision for you, including uh, some content types and lists and libraries, uh, some other assets as well, is all found in the provisioning template, which I'm going to do my best to get to, uh, so you can at least see where it is. And again, that's designed to be reviewed by you, customized by you, and turned into your provisioning solution. So it's fully, fully customizable. How you get started on all this? So uh, it's a very similar process to V1. Of course, go to uh, go to the GitHub page. For now, as I said, go to that V2 branch. Uh, you're going to connect to their site. I put in your Contoso demo SK URL. Of course, you want to change that. And from the project provisioning folder, you're going to run a apply PMP uh, tenant template commandlet and sit back and wait. If it takes about 10 minutes or so, uh, at least on my my um, in my environments, it takes about that long. But that that's it. Like that's supposed to be how easy it is. Uh, it's worked for us consistently well. And I'm also very much looking for feedback from you. You still need to be a tenant admin to make all this work. There's a full bunch of a whole set of prerequisites that are found in the documentation. There's actually not that many, but there are some things that you'll need to do. Uh, as I said, there's no current upgrade path from V1. Uh, don't really know how to get around this one. I'm definitely open for any kind of ideas besides just general documentation. And it's mainly because of the duplicate web parts. Uh, the, the, the web parts that we're installing, most of them really are just, they're migrated over from V1. They were upgraded to a more current version of SharePoint framework, but they're split up to their own solution. So there, there's gonna be the, uh, the personal calendar web part. Well, now you'd have two of them if you had both V1 and V2, and we did go with new IDs because we basically had to because we had to create new web parts. Uh, as well as, uh, I keep talking about 2019, that provisioning process, uh, as I said, is not yet finalized. So if you're looking to do this, uh, install this on the 2019 today, it's not there. I'd love to give you an ET on this. Don't have one. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's in the top of the backlog, but it's still in the backlog. So uh, let's go ahead and let's look at it. You can see the you can see right now what that is going to be looking like. But what I really care about is what is it going to look like um, as part of our um, what's going to look like live. Let's look at code and let's look at the design. So first of all, the project itself, uh, I told you. So you're going to go to the project for now. If you just go to the V2 branch, you'll get all the documentation about the V2 starter kit. 
And uh, please do read through this, doing everything I can to provide more documentation, uh, because I think that as a developer tool, that's where this is going to help so that you understand what's there and really try to accelerate the whole solution. All right, so let me go ahead and get, um, we'll go ahead and install this. So first of all, of course, we're going to connect. And then after we connect, we're going to run a simple commandlet. Now this commandlet would take the rest of the time that I have. So instead of actually uh, waiting for it, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it actually looks like. Uh, but it really is this easy. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the starter kit itself. What's going to happen as soon as that's installed, you're going to get a, a nice uh, portal that's going to be created for you. A uh, whole bunch of uh, web parts are automatically added to you. Everything you see here, this is a default installation. I have not done anything to this besides just loaded the page after it got installed. So a lot of content is added for you. A lot of web parts are put in place. Some of these are first party web parts. Some of these are uh, the custom web parts included as part of the page. So I think some really super cool stuff there. Um, if you go to the site pages, you'll see that the whole bunch of pages are created for you. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I think is kind of cool is the the personal page. This would be sort of your, your, your personal page that you'd create for people where they can get uh, a whole bunch of stuff on what they're doing, um, sites that they're following, uh, the tasks and email and whatnot. You can see that this is a demo tenant, so it's not overly populated with content. Um, but these are all the web parts that are included as part of the solution that uh, tie into graph and help get you lots of extra data. If we go to the app catalog, what you're going to see is all of the web parts that have been installed. And so now, it's, again, we went with that single solution per web part, which uh, I personally am a big fan of this in general. I think this is the right way uh, to be building solutions. Uh, I know when I first started, I used to put multiple web parts in a given solution. And uh, I just I think for ALM, uh, I just found that splitting them out seems to make a lot more sense. You can see there's a whole bunch of solutions that are created. And again, all of this is automated. I've ran two commands and I got all of this cool stuff. So let's just quickly check back. Yep, so it's still going on. So uh, let's go ahead and let's look at some of the code uh, so that you can get some accelerators here. The if you're if you've worked with the starter kit before or you looked at the code, the code should look very, very familiar. The main thing we added was the source, the source folder. If we look into the source folder, you're going to see all of the breakdown of all of the web parts, the extensions. Uh, etc. As well as you're going to get uh, down here at the, the templates. And this is where the magic happens is, is down on in the templates. So you've got the templates, uh, there's starterkit.xml. You can see we've got the shells for the other two, but the starterkit.xml is is the PNP provisioning template that does all of the magic. And uh, I've started to add some comment into it. I think it makes it a little easier to read, especially for people coming to this to the first time. But you can see how we're able to deploy all of the um, uh, all of the uh, solutions. We add so much more site design, site scripts. Um, there's a whole sequence that uh, multiple sequences that we have. If you're looking for a larger demo of how the provisioning engine works, the PNP provisioning engine works. Um, to me, this is a great place to look at because not only in 10 minutes or so will you get a full provisioned solution, but you can then see how the provisioning template is built. Okay, so I there's a couple thousand lines of code there, so I don't have time to go through it all. The other component I wanted to look at was the provisioning folder. So within the provisioning folder, you've got the compiled uh, starter kit.pnp uh, files. These are the actual PNP uh, provisioning files. And what happens is, or what you can do is, you can use the read PNP template commandlet. That is going to allow you to read those XML files. And then all you do is you save a PNP template, tenant template, excuse me, commandlet. That will allow you to take the XML files that are found uh, down in the source slash templates and create your own .pnp files. And then you can just do a simple installation, a reinstallation of the starter kit. This piece has not been documented. This is one of the top documentation pieces that I know that's left because to me, this is the the one of the next big steps you're going to want to do is build your own provisioning template based upon the examples that are here. And uh, although it's only two commandlets, uh, it's very well documented in general how to take a, a PNP XML template and turn it into a .PNP file and then run the um, uh, apply PNP template commandlet. I, I really want to make sure that that is spelled out for you so I can hopefully try to save you, you know, that extra 30, 60 minutes of thinking, what am I supposed to do? We just want to make it super seamless and easy for you to be able to do that.
Okay, so uh, I want to ensure I, I, I can spend a lot of time going through this. I, I'm, I'm sure you see there's a lot of really fun, cool stuff here. Uh, the other one I thought was really cool was the library. Uh, this one I, I do want to document with Elio. Um, I think it's interesting to see how uh, this was all put together where we basically created uh, localization, string localization within the library. And then within a web part, in particular, the web part that we activated here was the, uh, was the following sites. What we're doing is we're utilizing that library and from that library, we can then import the localization directly. So what you'll see is that this particular web part does not actually have, there's no localization folder because it's grabbing that from the library. A great way to have all of your web parts uh, utilize a library for, um, uh, for all of its localization. Okay, so let's go ahead and quickly wrap up because uh, we only have so much time left. The uh, last thing I want to do is, is how you can help. So um, uh, please, this is basically what we're looking at as a beta release. So install the solution in a dev tenant and provide feedback. I would love to have more people uh, working with this, playing with this, finding bugs, finding issues, uh, helping us find gaps in documentation. What are you looking to do that uh, doesn't currently work? What is it that you're looking to do that you don't understand? Please use the issues list uh, within the project. Uh, uh, Bo Cameron updated the the uh, template, the issues template, to try to help uh, steer you in the right spot to help you get the content to us so that we can help you address these. Um, also, though, hey, we're looking for PRs. Uh, if you find a bug, please make a PR for it. Pull the latest code, uh, put it on the dev branch, just like you normally would. We'd love to get that uh, uh, merged as soon as possible. If you find gaps in documentation, solve them, please. If you find something cool, let us know. Create an issue and say, hey, I solved it. Could someone go and create a documentation on it? Anything you could do to, to, um, uh, to help share I, I would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, but also as well, promote this on social channels. You know, Let people know this is out there. Uh, let, let people know your experiences, ideally if they're good, of course. Um, we're also definitely looking for videos, blog posts, recommendations, insights, et cetera. I want to see a lot of videos on using this because I think this is a great accelerator tool. That being said, I don't want to do all those videos, uh, particularly because it's this is not about me. This is obviously about all of us so for everybody to help you, everybody. So please, we would love to have you be a part of this as well. So with that, Vesta, I'll give you the last minute back and um, to wrap it up. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for that one. Uh, really great work. Thank you.